Hey kids, today we're going to talk about atomic theory. There are four scientists in their experiments that helped us develop what we now think of as the atom. Let's get right into it with the first scientist. And so uh, here, these are five postulates of atomic theory uh, theorized by John Dalton. And basically, these are just ideas about what an atom is. It says that number one, all matter consists of atoms. Right. We know that. Atoms are indestructible and unchangeable. Well, we know that's not exactly true anymore, but at the time it was. Um, elements are all characterized by the mass of yep. their atoms. And then when they react, they react in simple whole number ratios, not just one ratio, but multiple ratios. Um, for example, like you had said, uh, we were talking about water, right? So water uh, is hydrogen and oxygen, two hydrogens to every one oxygen. But you also have hydrogen peroxide, which is made of the same elements. But now we have two hydrogens to two oxygens. Right. So same elements, different combination. Okay, so that's where four and five come in there. Right. Um, so simple whole number ratios. So let's let's kind of look at, um, and remember if we're going too fast, pause us, rewind us. Okay. This is also another part of John Dalton's uh, ideas. So I'm just going to write his name so we know we're talking about him. Uh, John Dalton's postulates came, uh, ended up making three laws. Right. Laws are things that are proven. So uh, these laws were the law of conservation of mass, and I'll let you talk about okay, that. Okay, which means mass cannot be created or destroyed. So in chemical reactions, we're not ever gaining mass or losing mass. Atoms are being rearranged. Okay. We also have the law of definite proportions and multiple proportions, and these relate to postulates four and five. So definite proportion means that elements combine in simple whole number ratio, one simple whole number ratio. Multiple proportions means we have multiple combinations. So just like we talked about the water and the hydrogen peroxide, water would be definite proportions, multiple proportions would be water and the hydrogen peroxide. Right. So there's Same elements, different combinations. There are multiple whole number ratios for different elements. Okay, just trying to find a way, simple way to say that. I think that's pretty good for Dalton. Remember those laws, remember those postulates or ideas that they, they'll show up again for sure. All right, so let's move on to the next person as soon as this lets me. Okay, next one we have here. This is a picture of an experiment conducted by J.J. Thompson. And this experiment was called the cathode ray tube. As soon as I can get that written. Cathode ray tube. Now, Ms. Angarasa, what exactly went on here? So he was able to shoot a beam of electrons through um, the cathode ray tube. And on one side there was a positive plate and the other side there was a negative plate. The electrons were deflected towards the positive. We know that opposites attract. So if they were deflected or attracted towards the positive, then it means that electrons would be negative. Okay, so the white part there is just what happened and the conclusion is going to be in blue. It means therefore electrons must be negatively charged. Are negative. So J.J. Thompson, cathode ray tube, electrons are negative. You got to know what the experiment was, who did it, and what it showed, so just so you know. But it's only four scientists. It's, not it's only four scientists, not, not super bad. Okay. So J.J. Thompson then came up with an atomic model. This is Thompson's atomic model based on his experiment. And he called this the plum pudding model. Yep, and if you've ever seen plum pudding, it's an older dessert. It's just pudding, and it has raisins and plums and things on top of it. So he thought that the uh, protons and the electrons were just stuck in the top, so the atom was just a circle. They're just all mixing together. Right, which, so one big dense body. Which you'll find out, and as we, we know, it's not really the case. But plum pudding model for J.J. Thompson. Okay, so next person we're going to talk about is Ernest Rutherford. So Rutherford took Thompson's model and then did an experiment to prove it or disprove it. Um, he had used alpha particles, which are positively charged particles, shot them at a sheet of gold foil. Now these were all gold atoms. Hey, they ended up, a lot of them passed straight through, and some were deflected back. If Thompson's model was correct, they would have all been deflected back. But because some passed through, it meant that the atoms mostly empty space. When they hit the nucleus, they were deflected back or bounced off, meaning that there must be something dense in the center and it must be positively charged to deflect the positive particles. 
Okay, so I'm just trying to get everything you say. Um, so, so basically some deflected or bounced back, some passed straight through. And since we said, again, these alpha particles are positively charged, and since some of them bounced back, that meant that what now? The, there was a dense... Positively charged center. Positively charged uh, center. Which we now call a nucleus. Or nucleus. Okay. That seems pretty pretty legit right there. Didn't he come up with a model, though, to correct the plum pudding model? Yes, he did. He took it bit. a step further. Um, his model is actually what you see if you think of chemistry or you think of the atom, which is yeah. it's not how we actually think of it now, but that is used a lot. So um, he has the dense center, which are protons and neutrons, yeah, and then the nice. electrons just going around in an orbit. Okay, and that's, that's those guys right here. And then most of it is basically empty space. Right except for that dense region right there. So that's, that's pretty, pretty legit, but that's still not quite correct. Not quite, but we're getting there. Last person that we're gonna have to discuss was Niels Bohr. So Niels Bohr used math to yeah. figure out where the electrons were. So they're not really in those orbits the way Rutherford explained it. They're actually in what we call energy levels. So each energy level has different energy. Every time you move out, there's more energy. Okay, so the high energy is the one I'm circling right now. Right, so the electrons are actually, they have to be in those energy levels or in those orbits. They can't be uh, in between. So you can't have electrons right here or here or here. They have to be physically on that orbit. So like right. Earth has an orbit around the sun, it doesn't fall off that orbit. It's exactly. specific. Okay, and still, you know, you'll learn this is not exactly correct, but this is the closest thing to what we know today that was correct. Um, so, yeah, is there anything else we need to know? I think that's it. Okay, so we have, there's a song. We're going to post a video for a song about these four guys. It's actually really funny. You should take a listen. Yeah, it'll get stuck in your head and you won't forget. Exactly. <laughs>